Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. So today, as you guys can see up on the screen, we're going to be reacting to this article, I believe this is on Inven Global, um, talking about the LCS Spring Split, talking about one of the bigger stories um, that we actually had covered this past week, where 100 Thieves uh, benched their mid laner this week. It was one of the biggest stories, really, of the LCS season so far. We haven't had a ton of uh, roster changes or roster movement or anything like that, especially on some of the higher up teams. I mean, 100 Thieves at times has been kind of a top team uh, this split but as of recently maybe not so much but for sure a, a middle pack up upper, upper middle of the pack team um so this was a really really interesting story and then uh zix obviously explaining hunter thieves decision to start ryoma over demonte uh is really really cool i thought this was a great interview by Invin global i'm glad that zix was able to talk about this i think hunter thieves has been one of the best organizations in the lcs in terms of transparency um and this was a very very controversial issue there was a, a ton of people on twitter in my comments reddit all over the place on both sides some people saying DeMonte needs to be playing. Some people saying, yeah, DeMonte probably needed a break. Um, so I think it'll be cool to actually get uh, some of the explanation from Zix, again, whether you agree with him or not, at least to hear him out. And then, you know, you can further evaluate your opinion, uh, whether you agree with his reasoning or not as well. And I think it'll be interesting, especially now that we know how this weekend went for 100 Thieves. But before we get into that, I just wanted to mention real quick, if you guys have not already, please take a second and smash that like button. I would appreciate it so, so much. It really helps me out uh, with the YouTube algorithm. It is one of the best and easiest ways to help support my content and my channel if you are interested in doing that that would be awesome also subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content because we have a ton of league of legends content coming your way in the near near future lcs lec msi is right around the corner playoffs in all the different regions tons of videos coming your way you don't want to miss out uh and i would appreciate a ton run those numbers up that'd be dope with that being said let's get right into this um so this article uh this website's crazy there's so much stuff on the screen on the right side left side all over the place uh, my eyes are just all over but Anyway, this article started off talking about uh, 100 Thieves announced its decision to start uh, their academy mid laner, Ryoma, over Demonte in week five of the uh, LCS spring split. The community's reaction ranged from bewilderment to frustration. I mean, some people were happy. Some people were excited as well. I mean, some people were like, yeah, 100 Thieves has been sucking lately. Demonte's probably the biggest reason why. Uh, I didn't really hear anyone. I mean, there were some people that... that thought Ryoma was maybe ready for a second chance. I know a lot of people were like, yeah, DeMonte probably should be benched, but man, it kind of sucks that Ryoma's our backup. Maybe if we had a better backup mid laner, and I get it, but uh, it, there was really kind of reactions from all four corners. Like there, there was everything, a little bit of everything, which I think made the story even more interesting because there wasn't like a clear right answer um, and, and people were really all over the place. Um, Demonte's previously established synergy with the majority of 100 Thieves roster, as well as Rayoma's lackluster performances in the 2020 season led to the move being viewed as unfavorable by the vocal majority. And yes, I would agree. I, I do think the vocal majority was um, saying this was an unfavorable move, but I had tons of comments uh, saying that this was a good move and they were excited, uh, one, to see how 100 Thieves was going to look without Demonte, and two, to see if Demonte could use going down to the academy scene to get better um, as motivation, uh, as like a wake-up call, uh, because... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely not everyone disagreed with this move. Um, it wasn't 50-50, but it's not like it was like 90-10 either. Um, despite 100 Thieves losing to Evil Geniuses, this article was written after the Friday games, after Evil Geniuses was able to take down 100 Thieves, but before their Saturday and Sunday games. This was just after the first game of the weekend for 100 Thieves. Um, despite 100 Thieves losing to Evil Geniuses, Ryoma not only held his own, but was easily the strongest performer on the squad. After the loss, 100 Thieves head coach Zix talked about why the team decided to start Ryoma over Demonte, Ryoma's growth as a player since 2020, and the similarities and differences in his approach to the 2021 LCS as the 100 Thieves head coach compared to his first year with the squad last season sounds like a lot of good stuff um first i just wanted to take a look at this game um where they're saying <clears throat> that ryoma was the strongest performing member he went three to three three two and two i can't even talk on oriana um and yes he didn't do anything like amazing you know he wasn't like an insane carry he wasn't like about to win the game for 100 thieves or anything and evil geniuses is a solid team but it should be a beatable team for 100 thieves um you know ryoma was certainly not the reason that they lost he obviously didn't you know do so much to make them win the game but it's not like he got stomped by jizuke either um he, he played fine uh, i don't really think you could 
really give much of an opinion on him on this game. I think he played fine. He didn't play great. He didn't play bad. Um, so it was just kind of weird. But that kind of gives you the context for for when this uh, did to take place. So they asked him how he felt about his individual performance today. And he said, uh, this is Zix, the head coach for 100 Thieves, said, I think Roma did pretty well today. I have to go back and watch the game again uh, to get a bit more of a fully clear perspective on every single thing he did. But for the most part, what I came away with in terms of his ceiling was that he's performing pretty well today. He played aggressively. Uh, and he'd say he's pretty fearless. But I think you know, that's always a good sign especially for young players inexperienced players players with nerves um and players with a lot of pressure on them you know being the academy mid laner getting a chance to sub in pressure's on you because if you don't do well people are going to be calling for your head people are going to want you bench quick and there's some hundred thieves fans that didn't even want to see him playing at all so i mean to, to still be able to come out and play fearlessly and aggressively it's definitely a good sign it's also a sign of maturity confidence uh and skill i mean it, it does take skill to, to play aggressively and balls to the wall like that I think it's hard for a player to deal with uh, that much community backlash and still have the balls to go on stage and play cockily. So I like that in terms of Roma's play today. Again, I completely agree with that. He, uh, I mean, over the last year or, or however long he's been in North America now, I can't really even remember. I swear all the seasons like start blending together um, with all the splits and games and stuff. Uh, he's gotten a lot of shit from the North American community. Some of it definitely deserved. Some of it definitely rightfully so. He was not prepared to be a starter in the LCS. He did not play well. Uh, 100 Thieves fans expect more and probably deserve more and deserve better and I mean it was weird at the time but uh, and he was taking up an import slot but now he's not taking up an import slot uh, he's maybe had some time to develop an academy he maybe seems like you know a more confident more solid player and and again I'm not saying he's better than Demonte I'm not saying he's the answer for 100 Thieves short term or long term but I'm just saying that you know some things have changed maybe he's gotten a little bit better um, we haven't really gotten to see the scrims and stuff like that or how he meshes with the team or how bad Demonte he's been doing behind the scenes either because what we've seen on stage from Demonte recently has not been great so I can only imagine um how some of their scrims are going but you know no one really knows for sure um if you felt Ryoma played well today individually what do you think led to 100 Thieves loss I think this is a great question because yeah why why is 100 Thieves losing against an evil genius's team which uh you know they should probably be winning against especially if they want to be considered one of the top teams in the lcs evil geniuses is a solid team but they have not been world beaters by any mean they it's not like they're in first place it's not like they're even in second place um this is a game where we had a very early lead as well as the opportunity to snowball there was very basic ways we could have coordinated better to snowball the game for example who he was caught before it was our timer for the second dragon that always sucks uh on the third dragon we tried to full send on dr mundo and we weren't able to kill him Dr. Mundo is very, very annoying. I swear that guy never dies. Um, <laughs> that's one of those plays that is bad. In hindsight, obviously, you look uh, at it after and you say, well, I guess he just doesn't die there, and it became a really bad play. Outside of those two mistakes, uh, the game kind of got out of our hands. We didn't execute small windows of opportunities we had later in the game to be able to start winning again. This is ultimately what led to us losing. And, you know, at the end of the day, none of that's that bad. It's just best of ones. Some plays like that are going to happen. You know, you're going to go for a crazy kill onto a Dr. Mundo, and it's going to end up he's way too tanky. It's going to end up he's healing way too much. Um, and in a series, you'd have a chance to rebound from that you'd have a chance to learn from that but in best of ones uh, especially uh, an uncommon pick like dr mundo uh some weird stuff like that can happen so uh, it's not too concerning that they lose one game especially when you know they're gonna make playoffs they're gonna be able to compete later on they're just trying to improve they're trying to get better um so uh, yes it sucks to lose but it's not really at the end of the day but here we get to the good stuff what was the methodology for starting Ryoma over Demonte today? This is what we're here for. This is the spicy stuff. This is stuff that I wanted to hear about from Zix. And he said, obviously the community is going to have a certain view that they base their opinions of players off of. But they only get to see three games per week. I think that's a great point. Obviously, like I said, we don't know what's going on with the scrims. We see much more than that. Anywhere between 15 to 19 games per week outside of the LCS, which that is crazy when you consider, you know, they're scrimming four or five days a week. Uh, a lot of, well, maybe not, maybe three or four days a week now because uh, the LCS is three days a week, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So they they can't scrim that much. They probably scrim three days a week. Um, and yeah, it's crazy how many games are they're playing and when they're playing like two scrim blocks a day they're the coaching staff is getting to see these players so so often i've been playing against these same teams in the lcs yes obviously scrims is a different environment lower pressure um people are maybe you know playing different picks playing a little bit more aggressively playing a little you know limit testing and stuff more often but uh you know at the end of the day the games we get to see on stage that is just a fraction of what the coaching staff gets to see uh, and i mean that's how it is for all sports but uh it just is interesting this allows us to properly evaluate a player's performance, but the community can't really see it, which again, yes, we can't see it, which is why I think it's really cool. And I think more organizations should do so. And it is important to do so that 100 Thieves are so transparent, you know, 
Zix talking to the media, Papa Smithy going on Twitter, going on Reddit, letting people know what's up. Because, yes, when a, when a move is made like this, it is crazy. And fans do overreact. And fans do have kind of, uh, you know, crazy reactions and stuff. And they don't know what's going on. It was a surprising move that a lot of people weren't expecting. Um, so getting some explanation, just some rationale, uh, is really good. And then you can also take in that rationale and use it to evaluate further on. You know, now we're going to see, is Ryoma going to do good? Is, is it going to be, uh, is DeMonte going to come back stronger from this? Uh, and then we can see if the coach is making good decisions. Is the general manager making good decisions, um, which is important. That being said, we thought overall DeMonte's performance this week was at a level that was lower than expected of him, which I would completely agree. DeMonte has not been playing good recently. I would say it's even more than just this past week. Uh, it was a hard choice, but with the meta the way it currently is, we felt like it was a choice we had to make to stay competitive. Ryoma had been doing very well in Academy. He is considered one of the best mids at the moment, and we tried him in LCS scrims. He was performing really well against all the best mid laners we scrimmed, and that's great to hear. Um, and I do think the meta thing is really big. You know, at the beginning of the season, we had Rise, Galio, Twisted Fate, all kind of Demonte staple champions that were uh, pick and ban early on, and that's why 100 Thieves looked pretty strong in the lock and tournament. That's why they looked pretty strong early on. Now, those champions are still playable, but we are seeing much less of them. We are seeing a lot more of the just standard control mages, and 100 Thieves has a couple options there. They can try and force Demonte onto champions that he's not as successful with, um, like the control mages. They can play the Galio and Twisted Fate still, which is something I think they should probably do even if they're not completely optimal in the meta right now if they fit demontes and their team's play style the best i think you can still make it work um you know we've seen teams uh have identities and stick to it before or their option is to go with ryoma who is much more comfortable on these control mages ryoma is you know that's his thing he is known for these control mages now is he better than demonte on control mages yeah, i don't know exactly we're gonna find out and and even if he is better on control mages is that even enough for 100 thieves um because obviously that's not really the identity they want to play they're not really built around um you know playing around mid or, or scaling mid lanes or anything they they are strong in the side lanes and they're all about facilitating stuff and and they really need the meta to be those facilitative style mid laners and that's when demonte's always been at his best but again if they do think that they need to play this style in the mid lane, if they do think that's where the meta's at, uh, I think it starts to make more sense why they would go with Rioma because yes, he, I mean, that's that's his thing. If Demonte's thing is the Galio and the Twisted Fate and the Kiana and the Rise, well, Rioma's thing, you know, is the Oriana and the Syndra and, and stuff like that. Yes, he, it's not like he's like Bjergsen on these picks, but it's what he's best at. Um, so giving him a chance during this meta, I don't think is that big of a deal. They said, given that Rayoma plays the meta mids, like all the control mages, again, what I just talked about, um, but can also still be pretty decent at roaming style since he was primarily on Galio last year, we just figured it made the most sense to make a change now. We have two weeks before uh, the spring playoffs to see everything going on and make a decision regarding the best version of our roster. And, and I think that's a big thing too. You have some time where you're going to make the playoffs, no matter what, even if you lose all these games, uh, I'm pretty sure they would still make the playoffs. Uh, you know, if they have to win a couple games, you know, they're, they're talented enough to be able to win games when they need to. Um, so they're going to be okay. They're going to be able to get at least to the playoffs. And then if they have a, a couple game sample size of Ryoma, you know, say he played all, he played all three games this week. Maybe he'll play all three games next week. Maybe not. I don't know, but say he plays the rest of the season. So they get six games from him. They then have a sample size of the lock in tournament, plus the 12 games in regular season of DeMonte, plus all the scrims they've seen, plus the six games of Ryoma, plus all the scrims they've seen to then make a decision on what they actually think is going to be their best opportunity of winning in the playoffs rather than just kind of wondering or being like, you know, maybe Ryoma would fit in a little bit better here maybe we'd be playing better you know like if 100 thieves was just winning a ton and dominating everybody you know they'd be fine even if maybe it's not the perfect meta for demonte but they weren't they were dropping some random games that they shouldn't have been losing their wins weren't even necessarily looking that great weren't even necessarily looking that clean so i, I think it just makes a lot of sense and i think really teams should probably make roster changes more often i don't think they have to be so devastating i don't think it has to be um you know a bad thing for demonte or a bad thing for the team i think demonte can use that as a chance to go practice get Get better maybe use it as some motivation ryoma gets a chance to prove himself and in the end it should end up just being good for the team uh that now they know exactly what they look like with ryoma in the mid lane they know what they look like with demonte in the mid lane and then they can make a decision going into playoffs maybe the meta changes again maybe it doesn't maybe ryoma ends up being the answer for them right now maybe demonte's answer maybe neither of them are the answer and then they they know going into summer split they maybe need to make a change because i think that's also important too is that you need to test out the things you got you need to let uh you know you need to 
play your whole hand. Show the cards you got. Use the players uh, and the pieces that you have in place uh, and see what you got before you start looking elsewhere. Because I know that's like a problem I have with TSM where they literally had treats and they didn't even try them out. And now he's, you know, he's killing it over in Europe. He's doing well in SK. Uh, and they went and spent all this money on a support when maybe treats was the whole answer right in front of him this whole time. Again, do I believe Ryoma's answer for 100 Thieves? Not really. No, I, I, I don't think so. But it is possible. And if Demonte's not working out, why not give him a shot? But I did think it was cool, again, that Zix gave us an explanation. Whether you agree with his explanation or not, I think you should at least uh, appreciate that a coach is willing to talk about it uh, in the public like that. And hopefully it should give you a little bit more confidence in the 100 Thieves, you know, team, organization, brand, that they are pretty cool. They do make some good decisions. And uh, uh, again, whether you're a DeMonte fan, 100 Thieves fan, Realma fan, whatever, just know that they're giving everybody a shot. And if somebody wants a spot, they can take it. You know, if DeMonte wants a spot back, Go dominate an academy. Go prove yourself in scrims. If Ryan wants a spot, here's your chance. Like, they're getting a fair competition at the end of the day. Nobody's getting screwed. Nobody's really being treated unfairly or poorly. So, I don't really see any issues here. And I really do appreciate Zix speaking out and talking to the media a little bit. Because that's always cool. But, that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you enjoyed it. I would appreciate it so, so much. Leave a comment down below. What do you think about the whole situation? Uh, now that we've seen Ryoma for a couple games, you think it's time to bring Demonte back? You think they should ride Ryoma out the rest of the season? I'd love your guys' thoughts and opinions on anything we talked about in today's video. Subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content. Hopefully, catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.